Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today I am so excited to have on a 24 year old from Alpharetta, Georgia, USA, a fifth round draft pick of the Detroit Red Wings, a staple of the Youngstown Phantoms. Uh, looks like he has played for Canada and the USA somehow, former captain of the Maine Black Bears where he was the Hockey East second team all-star and best defensive forward. Last two season, full seasons have been with Grand Rapid Griffins in the AHL. And he seems to be knocking on the door of the NHL. And he is our youngest potter to date. Welcome to the podcast, Chase Pearson. Hey, how's it going? Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm surprised you got my age right. I just turned 24. Yeah, happy birthday, actually. That was the first day I tried to lock you in. You actually said, uh, that's my birthday, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was well, I was going to, and then I was like, hey, I probably have something going on that night. Yeah, you were actually willing to do it, and I'm like, man, you don't have to do that for me. I'll, I'm flexible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So happy birthday. So you're 24, eh? That's, uh, that seems like a long time ago for me. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say I'm getting old, but I guess I'm not. Yeah, and I guess... Uh, how we know each other is what I get into. And I, you're old, you were the internet guy um, at the start of episode 55 with your old band, Scott Pearson. Yep. So whoever watched that and saw the technical difficulties, I was this, the solution to that. Yeah. And um, that's how I saw what you were up to as a hockey player. And I, I uh, asked your old man if you'd be into it and he thought you would. And that's how we hooked this up. So thanks for coming on. Um, I, I'm excited to have a guy that literally looks like you're knocking on the door of the NHL. And that'd be really cool to have an active NHL game played by the podcast. Yeah, man. I'm excited. Hopefully, hopefully it happens. You know, I'm looking forward to this year and see if I can make something happen. Yeah, for sure. So let's get into some of this. Um, we got the other ways we know each other is uh, I guess this is kind of Atlanta week because I had Derek Nesbitt on earlier this week, who is also yeah. living in Atlanta. He actually texted me before the pod. He's like, yeah. He's like, hey, you're going on? I'm like, what are you talking about? The podcast. And he's like, oh, yeah, I went on uh, Monday. <laughs> yeah, he, we on a Monday, we, uh, we, we hung out for three hours. It got a little late. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. He's a, he's a great guy. Yeah, so you guys have known each other for a bit, and you've grown up in Atlanta. So what's the – I guess uh, the other reason – the reason I know your old man was because he was my roller hockey coach, and I was trying to do the math. I was figuring you were about three or four years old when I played roller hockey for your old man. That's right. Yeah. So I, I actually still work out in that the roller rink there at the cooler sometimes do my sprints and stuff in there. That the, all the, the banners are up there. Your name's probably on one of them. Beautiful. That's nice to hear. <laughs> um, I think we, we were North American champions that year. Um, so is there still a lot of roller going on in Atlanta? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I guess it's like uh, sporadic. I'm not really involved in that scene much anymore. So yeah, I'm no, more... you got a bit more serious things going on. Actually, I think it was after that tournament um, or that that summer was when I decided roller hockey was over because um, hockey was getting too serious. My dad um, chased you out of the game, right? What's that? My dad chased you out of roller hockey, right? Oh uh, no, actually, I really I enjoyed that summer. It was a lot of fun playing with those guys, and for him, um, we we had a great time went to the Lonnie Kai in Florida won a championship yeah we had fun so would you know Tom were you Tom Bardis's age is that really I think he was so his old man um kind of uh, set up my myself and my buddy coming to play for the team oh John yeah yeah, yeah. that's awesome that's it cool. was awesome he paid for our trip down to Florida to Minnesota and it was a pretty fun uh, summer for an 18 year old <laughs> <laughs> yeah you must have had a blast I'm sure yeah, it was a good roller hockey uh, experience. Okay, moving on is uh, my question is where and what are you doing now? So are, you are in Atlanta right now? Yeah, so it's on Alpharetta right now, just training and skating and playing golf, doing a little of this, a little of that. So it's fun. I remember those days. Those are fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I'm still going you know, to soak up every minute I can of this because I know it won't be forever as well. Um, yeah, and you should, you definitely should, because when it's over, you're just in your shed <laughs> calling guys. Um, uh, but no, that's cool. Um, so when do you leave then? When's camp? Yeah. So a couple of weeks camp starts the 22nd, uh, a hard date, but I might go up a little early yet. So, so I'm going to figure out the exact day I'm planning on going up, but pretty soon it's coming up quick. I'm excited though. 
Yeah. So, uh, well, I guess I'm curious kind of because yeah, I didn't know the games changed guys are leaner than they were back when I got into pro guys were like way bigger and meatier. Um, yeah. what, what, what's in a day of training, um, for a 24 year old that's in the AHL. Uh, so usually you wake up around six, have a Bud Light. Uh, <laughs> That's old school, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I usually get up around six, though. Um, usually in the gym by seven. I like to have like, a little coffee and stuff. And then probably work out for an hour and a half. Then I jump on the ice for usually an hour, hour 20. Um, that was, my, that was another out. question is how much you skate in the summer. So you skate a lot. I do. I, I, it's hard for me to keep away sometimes to be honest, to be honest, I, I'd probably do too much at some points, but you know, I feel like my body can handle it right now. So I, I like, I love it too. So I might as well. Is that right? And like, is it like doing skills on your own out there sometimes if you're skating that much or do you have a bunch of yeah. guys that are high level? So there's probably, there's a group of, you know, five, six guys, um, guy played a couple of guys in American league and then some co ACHL players. We all go out and do skills. My dad runs, runs it most of the time. So. Okay. Also. Cause uh, rumor has it is you're the, the sixth, about the sixth best forward in Alpharetta on Tuesday, Thursday mornings behind old Phil and Jim. Oh my God. I don't know who you talked to before the podcast. <laughs> That's correct. That's pretty accurate. You know, old Phil, Jim, Paul Asman, uh, even, you know, Steve Jacobs, those guys got, Got a, got a few spots ahead of me, so I got some work to do. Okay. Well, I don't know who you're talking about. I just have a big network, and I just asked a couple questions. Sure. I'm sure you got a phone number from someone I'm related to, and, you know. No, no, just just asking questions, just asking around what's going on. Um, okay, so that's interesting. I, uh, I, I, you know, I the game was changed a lot while I was – doing it but uh i never skated much in the summers but i guess i was going to europe where you have like a month of training camp so yeah. i didn't really feel like i needed to <laughs> yeah so we got we got a couple of european guys too and they they all say the same thing they're like i don't want to skate when i'm home as much because you know we're there for six weeks and <laughs> we're on the ice twice a day every day and well, you guys yeah. have to be ready when you guys show up, it's go time. Like when, when you're over there, you you're signed for the year and you got a month to, uh, you know, get ready. Get the barrel off, right? Shit's yeah. Intact. It's a little different when you're showing up and it's like whether or not you make the team, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. What else do I got here is, uh, so how old would you have been when like Atlanta has the thrashers? Oh man. I was so for me growing up, we moved here in 01 after my dad was done playing. So I was here for, when were they inaugurated? 04, maybe? My stats could be way wrong on that. So pretty much ever since 04, uh, my dad took me to games. I think we'd, we'd probably go. I remember going when I was younger, Pee Wee, Squirts, Mites even. I'd take buddies and we'd go because the company had tickets and the cooler had tickets too. So half the time they were, they were never used. So then I would go with my dad probably once, twice a week if they had home games. And uh, that's, I guess that kind of leads into the other question is what's it like growing up uh, like with an NHL or old man? It's good. It, there's pros and cons, right? You know, he's obviously strict. And as a child, and I was a little pissed off at him at points, but I think now looking back on it, it's all for a good reason. Well, you know, it's it, like hard, right? Because like my kid's not old at all. Like he's, yeah. he's, he's not even nine yet, but like, when I go to a practice and I'm not on the ice with them, if I sit there and watch and I like, I'm paying for them to be out there and then they're not trying, like they're not trying. It's like, well, what are we doing here? Exactly. Like, let's go do something else. Right. You'll play video games. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not going to try, then like, why, why am I paying for you to be here? Right. Not. I know. And I, I think that so for me, as like other sports, I was probably more in that mindset. Right. But hockey, I always loved hockey. Um, I don't know. I guess you could say it runs in the family or whatever, but uh, kind of does. Yeah, so yeah. I was kind of like that with lacrosse. I played lacrosse for summer. Wasn't really that into it, right? I played soccer growing up quite a bit, um, but then I, I ended up just choosing hockey. So yeah, I played a bunch of sports, and it's it's weird. You kind of you do you fizzle out, right? And it's the one you're the most passionate about that you stick yeah, you, with. You get bored or whatever of the sport, and then it's like, ah, well, I like this better, and then you're able to do that. So I just focus on one eventually. Okay. Well, yeah, it's good. People still play other sports, man. It's like around here, people like try to play hockey as much as they can, but I guess you do too. <laughs> well, now, now I do. Yeah, I, now you do. So I think I need to play. 
So yeah, then, now it's your job, right? Yeah, I think if, I, if Detroit called me in the summer and was like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm just playing, uh, you know, badminton and soccer for training. Like, what are you talking about? You know? Yeah, yeah. So you have like, a, do you have a trainer then or does the team supply you with that? Yeah, so I mean, there's there's options. I use a guy at Chicago, Ian Mack, uh, Tomahawk Science. He's good, up and coming. I say up and coming. Do you say your of- guy's in Chicago? Yeah, I just a remote thing. So I just, you know, face him every once in a while. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I'm pretty self motivated. So I, I don't mind getting up and going to the gym. Yeah. No, that's why well, it's good, man. Well, you got to be self motivated to get to where you're at. Um, okay. We got one more, another random question. I guess this one's just kind of off. Not even sure what it means. What's your best red Gentron story? Best red Gentron story. Oh my God. Dude, a little context. You know who Red is? I don't actually. So he was my head. He actually just recently passed away, which is very sad, but he was oh. my coach at Maine for three years. He was recruited me and all that stuff. And anyone who knows Red knows the kind of guy. He is just intense, right? Like to joke, but uh, great coach. Loved him. Gave me every opportunity at Maine. Uh, but I guess the, my favorite story with him was I was either freshman year or so, sophomore summer maybe uh we will always go in to the rink and i one day he comes down he's like chase i need you to come up to the office for me and so i went up sit down he's like at, at his chair just sitting back in, in his chair like this and i sit down and anyone who knows ready just you'll sit across from him and he'll just sit there and look at you for a second just get just make you feel very uncomfortable for about 10 seconds and then he'll and you know sit up and he's like you know why I brought you in here today, Chase? And I'm like, no, no coach. Like what's going on? And he's like, what is this? And he holds up a picture and there's a horse on there. And I'm like, I'm like, what the heck? The like, coach, there's a, it's a horse. And he's like, you're wrong. Like, that's a Cheval. It's like, what the hell is a Cheval? And he goes, that's horse in French. And that's what you're going to be for this program as a horse. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, all right. So from then on, he just Cheval, Cheval. When he talked to me, I was like, oh. That was your nickname was Cheval? For, he, for him, he would call me that. So, Man. yeah. Well, my, my college coach has actually called me uh, Pork Chop. So. Pork Chop, Cheval. <laughs> well, it's not far off. Yeah, I yeah, it hurt actually. I did the best <laughs> I could. It's just a body type issue. Um, no, that's cool that he brought you in. He obviously uh he obviously saw a lot in you. And you said that was your freshman year? Yeah, I, I honestly it's hard for me to remember freshman. It was either like midway through freshman year or just after freshman year and freshman uh, sophomore. He probably really threw you off when he showed you a horse, eh? Yeah, I was really confused. And then after that he just kept calling me Cheval and I was just yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's good, coach. Uh, did the boys start calling you that, or did they just oh, make fun of you? No, they just make fun of me. I never got called Cheval. No, no, yeah. they wouldn't. They wouldn't go with that. that. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So, uh, I guess I didn't. We didn't really talk about like minor hockey in Atlanta, and like, was there good competition? Did you have like good players around? So I mean, it's. Other than old Phil and Jim. Yeah. So besides them, it was pretty, pretty sparse. No, I'm kidding. You know, they, uh, they obviously pushed me to be the best I could. Jimmy and old Phil, but um, in all seriousness, that was was a joke, bad joke, but they, uh, so in Atlanta growing up double a pretty much my whole life. And then we ended up getting triple a my Bantam major year. And then, I, like, once that happened, we were traveling. But even in double you know, played Duluth. But, like, so if Atlanta gets triple-A, like, where do you have to travel? Who else has triple-A? Oh, like, Carolina, Chicago, Detroit. Uh, so how much are your parents paying to play hockey? It was a lot, yeah. My Well, my dad coached, so I'm sure there was some kind of deal worked in there. But the, it's expensive down here because you got to travel every weekend, hotel, flights, all that stuff, right, um, to get the good competition. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, from the team, when I'm 97 birth year, so we had about, let's see, me, five guys that are still playing pro. In Atlanta? From Atlanta, not in Atlanta. but like, Yeah, no, that's what I mean, you know, from, from Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, guys that went on to college or. That age group, 97? 97 birth year in Atlanta, yeah, yeah. 
Wow, that's like the eighty threes from Elmira, Ontario. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we had we had we had five guys go pro from yeah, a single eight town. So I say I say pro. I mean I'm in college and pro. There's three of us that are pro. Rest one college. No, that's still like in. I think if you get a scholarship, if you get college, I think that's making it in hockey. I think that's the whole goal is is just try and get some education paid for, right? Yeah, well, for a lot of guys, right? I mean, Division One college from Atlanta to hockey, everyone's like, "What the heck?" Yeah, yeah. I remember being on that roller hockey team, and like to me, they seemed like roller hockey players, not ice hockey players in Atlanta. Yeah, I know <laughs> that's what most of it was, but yeah, you know, I guess you find good talent anywhere if it's if it happens to be. Well, uh, and not to toot your old man's horn here because we already had his podcast, but like guys that played in the NHL that then ended up living all over the USA. Um, those are the guys that it, when they give back to the game, like your old man is and are training kids and running practices, even at your age, let alone, he probably was doing it your whole way up. Like you said, he was coaching. Like all of a sudden, all these kids are getting a lot different training than they would have in Atlanta a decade before. Right. If yeah, they even I mean, had ranks. Yeah. I mean, you think about, I mean, Atlanta hockey had the flames in the seventies, but I don't really know of any rinks around. Right. And then up until the cooler was built in 97, the earth board. Right. Uh, and he came in 02. So uh, he helped build the program up from what it started as. Right. Which is a lot of kids probably have him to thank for going college or any other place. Right. Cause that bringing that knowledge that he had of playing the NHL and what it takes is invaluable, especially in Atlanta. Right. Or like you said, most guys are probably going to get, coach is someone that played you know division three and they're, they're from atlanta right and <laughs> they don't really know much about the game but they played enough to where it's like hey we need a coach so. yeah and no that's that's uh i guess invaluable to the city and like yeah to the, the youth program around there that's uh and then but you see it everywhere right you see it in like st louis you see it in chicago like all all these these cities um like like San Jose, they're getting minor hockey and everywhere else, right? It's all because there's NHL guys staying there. Well, and you think, I mean, a lot of the spots that you normally wouldn't think of hockey, right? Just all these ex NHLers want to live in very nice places that are probably not cold and stuff, right? Too. They're like, hey, let's go. The quality of life is a little better in Southern or Western states, right? So then you get these guys and the programs, and it's great for, for hockey and places you normally wouldn't think it would be. Yeah, it's like, like your old man decided not to head back to Cornwall. He stayed in <laughs> he stayed in Alpharetta, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You almost flip flopped though. You did head to Cornwall. You almost decided you were moving there, but um, I guess we kind of are into that. So you you do get noticed. You're playing Triple A. Um, your old man's the coach, so he probably didn't have to pay as much as the other parents. But good thing there's enough parents around that have the money to have that team, right? Like, yeah. that's expensive, man. I couldn't imagine flying to my kids' games. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, I mean, I think the area around here, I guess people do well for themselves. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, I guess families are well off enough to afford that, right? Yeah. No, I – yeah, I understand. Okay. Moving on is um, then you, so you get noticed playing triple A and uh, you get drafted to the USHL and the OHL in the same year. So um, what year is that? And um, because like, how do you get drafted to the OHL if you're living in Alpharetta? So I, I think like, like I said, you know, you get, you're good enough. You get noticed anywhere. Right. And I think, you go to some showcases where a lot of teams are at because it's a triple A showcase. Like I said, I think it was Van a major year that I, that I got dropped 2013 would have been right. Um, yeah. You go to these showcases and they, they see teams play and I guess they saw me play in Atlanta and my dad probably had some contacts. Hey, come watch. And then what do you think? Right. And um, yeah. And they drafted fourth round to Oshawa. So that was pretty cool when I got drafted the O and that was, I, at first I was like, Hey, yeah, I want to go. Let's go, Dad. Come on, I want to go play in the OHL. But then he just kind of was like, "Okay, son, slow your roll. Like you don't know. You gotta take your take your options here, right?" So uh, that was pretty cool. But yeah, those tournaments were a big help for me. Navigating lieutenant, by the way, um, that's from the Bayfield Brewing Company. That's my sponsor. Um, just let you know what kind it is. Um, moving on though is um, so you get drafted to both though. And um, 
you do, I'd like when your old man's played major junior and you get drafted there to the OHL, like, and he played there, I would think that is your first inclination, but sorry for burping the mic again, folks. But, um, like, um, when you do get down to the States and you see what like college hockey can be like, and your old man probably saw it and like that you get an education. Um, and, and he probably is pretty smart to uh, try and steer you that direction. Cause I know that's what I would do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, draft of USHL, OHL, so you had a couple options, right. Which is nice for me, but I think at the end of the day, he kind of realizes he got, I don't want to say lucky because he worked his ass, ass off in, in hockey and obviously that affords opportunity, but to get the job that he has now without an education was uh, was phenomenal. I don't want to call it luck, but it was lucky, right? To meet the right people, don't make the right connections. And um, I guess he saw like, hey, if you're not going to be a first round pick or top top round pick and you, it's important to, to get your education and take your time is the biggest thing too. And college afforded me the extra time to develop as, you know, personally off the ice and on the ice as a player too. No, I totally agree because yeah. it was the same for me. Like when I saw guys turning pro at like 18, 19 or whatever out of the OHL. And I was like, man, like I was at 18, still living with my parents. And then yeah. when I finally did go to Western Michigan, like I didn't feel ready to even leave school to do pro yet. Like it's everybody is ready for different things at different times. Right. But the mm -hmm. OHL is a grind, man. And like, though, I, I know back when it, when I was playing, like guys got tunnel vision on hockey and pro hockey, then, then they forgot about school when you're playing 80 games a year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's tough too, right. Cause they, they promise you these, these school packages too. Right. But then it's like, Hey, you play for four years or whatever. And then it's like, Oh, you can either go play pro or you, or you get the school Canada and go to school. It's like, well, I've always wanted to play pro. And then the schooling kind of goes out the window. Right. So then you don't end up doing it. Exactly. Yeah. Cause it's expensive afterwards. If you don't have the package. Yeah. <laughs> the package is expensive. Yeah, no, I totally understand. Um, so, okay. So then you make the decision somehow um, you're living in Alpharetta or Atlanta and you do end up playing for the Cornwall Colts your old man's hometown and uh, other former potter jeff Legui was a cornwall colt so yeah a lot of ties to the cornwall colts on the pod now love it how'd yeah. you end up there so i think that was more of a connection through my dad he knew ian mckinnis was the coach, still the coach player owner gm all of it ian is for the colts right he is okay. cornwall but uh yeah, so he knew him, and then I also had family there at the time. My, my grandparents were alive there, and my aunt and uncle uh, still live in Cornwall today. So it, it kind of worked out right because I was 15, turning 16, going there. Um, I was able to live with family, so it kind of eased that away from home thing for me, which was really nice. But uh, it would have been a lot different than Alpharetta. Oh, well, yeah, it's way different. But you get you right. That was my first year of realizing, wow, like this is what I chose, right? I get to this small Canadian town on the border uh, of upstate New York, right? And there's snow. And I've been there before, but to live there is completely different than just visiting, right? Yeah, because when you guys probably visited, it was maybe Christmas when it's or summers, right? When it's nice out. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. It was Christmas. Yeah. And <laughs> January, <laughs> February are different animal. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's some dark grade snowy days there that are very, very, yeah. Anyways. I was, I was, no, I was curious about what it would have been like. Cause you had grown up uh, different, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you afforded like in Atlanta and especially even it's, I mean, now it doesn't really start getting cold until October and, and you want to call it cold. It's not even that cold for me at least, or you, I'm sure you'd be like, wow, this is shorts and t-shirts, right? It's 50 degrees. Everyone's in, Canada goose jackets down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely but, would be in shorts and flip-flops for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, sorry, you got sidetracked. So you lived with family. You got to play for Cornwall. Um, and I also saw you played two games in the USHL that year. So is that at the start of the year or the end? That was the end. So I, I finished the season in Cornwall. And then Jason Kohler, the GM of, of Youngtown, said, yeah, come get your feet wet, play a couple of games. So I went there for a couple of weeks, played some games. 
And what was the talk with, I would think it was Oshawa that drafted the OHL. Was it, what was the deal there? Yeah. So I, I went to, I actually went to, they had like a 48 hour rule, right? At, the, at those camps. So I went when I was 15 to, to Oshawa's camp, the 48 hour rule. So I wouldn't lose my eligibility for the NCAA. Yeah. Um, and then went there, kind of did that. And they were like, yeah, if you want to play here, you can, you can come. Right. And we'll, we'll have you play in Oshawa or whatever. And then that was really, at that point, I was just kind of looking to my dad and like, hey, what do you think? And he's like, well, give it a year in junior A and then see what happens. And if you still want to go to the OHL and think that's the right call, then do it. Or if not, you can start talking to schools. And um, that first year in Cornwall is when schools started reaching out and coming to watch and everything. So that was uh, a whole experience within itself. Yeah, no, it is an experience when teams start coming to watch. And I was the same. I think a lot of guys probably do listen to kind of whatever their old man's advice at that age. Cause I did the same. My old man was like, like you're, and everybody always said to me, like, you're too short. You're not going to make it. So like, it was just natural yeah. to like, think yeah. like school. Right. But um, moving on is, uh, Okay, when do you play for Team Canada and when do you play for Team USA? Because it said you played for both countries. I did, I did actually, yeah. So I'm a dual citizen. Uh, I was born in Cornwall, Ontario, actually. But my mom was born in Florida. So, and then obviously my dad moved down here. So I was given dual citizenship. So now I have two passports. Well, in the process of renewing the Canadian right now, but I have a US passport. So my first year in... Uh, in Cornwall, they have the World Junior A Challenge. I don't know if you're familiar. Um, I don't. I I I only I played Junior B, which it was like the same thing. But that's when I got my scholarship from there. So I never played in the Junior A that had that. Yeah. But um, so there's a Team Canada in the Junior A, and then there's what a Team USA in Junior A. Yeah. So it's funny. So the first year I was, was 16, whatever they got invited to the tryouts for the junior challenges, Canada East and Canada West, which is like the BCHL. I think there's the MJHL, all those leagues out there that are junior A. And then the Eastern League, which is like OJ, CCHL. Um, and I'm, I'm blanking. There's probably a few more. Then they have a group tryout. So I went to that. I ended up making the team. And you're saying you were 16 and you made like the under 20? Yeah. I, yeah. It was like under 20 junior A challenge team. Yeah. So I, you made, made it as a 16 year old. I made it as a 16 year old. Yeah. And I played, it was in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. So we went for, I don't know, I forget how long, a couple of weeks, maybe out there, played the tournament, um, finished the season in Cornwall. And then, uh, and played. so you had grown up your whole life in the U S and then you yeah. play in Cornwall for a year and they're like, well, Hey, you're good. Why don't you come try out for Canada? Yeah, exactly. yeah. So I guess they saw me play like, Hey, come to the tryouts. And I made that team. So it was pretty cool. Actually. <laughs> that I, is cool. I didn't even know what it was before I went up to Cornwall. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's, so then you end up not to skip years here, but then you end up making that, is it the same team, but for the team USA? <laughs> Yeah, so then I went to Youngstown my – what year was this? So the year after Cornwall, I went to Youngstown for my first year. And that year I didn't get invited to the U.S. tryouts. And I, I, don't, I couldn't play in the Canadian team because I was now playing in the States. So these are the best players in the whole, like, USHL? Yeah, so that would have been the best USHL players. Yeah, the U.S. sends that team. So my first year did get invited or picked. Or, I think they just pick a team for the U.S., but then the next year, my second year in Youngstown, I did get picked. So then I went went my second year and played for USA in the same tournament. <laughs> yeah. uh, man, you bought, you were young to make that for Canada. That's wild. Yeah, I, I honestly, I don't know how I, I guess, yeah. I no. didn't play, I, didn't, I wasn't like a go-to guy, but I was probably playing third, fourth line, but it's so cool. No, that that's really cool. That, yeah. Well done. That's cool. Yeah. You got to play for both countries too. My. <laughs> Uh, what's that for the pictures yeah no the yeah like my kids have dual citizenship too because my wife's american so that's interesting to hear that story um okay so then you do go from cornwall to youngstown and then you do play like you said the school started checking you out in cornwall so what what all schools got hot on your tail and how did you choose maine and when did you choose yeah, so I mean, if there's there's like a folder of stuff, uh, 
I think my dad still has it somewhere. But that like that Cornwall year was when I would start getting calls from schools, like just checking in. Hey, that's when Maine first reached out. That's when a lot of schools like Dartmouth, Denver, um, I'm trying to think, Harvard, those those you know those kind of schools, they they come to watch because they're oh well, Denver was the only one that was not really close, but. Um, just kind of keeping tabs on me, checking in, like, hey, how's it going? Just want to. What get were your grades like? In Canada, they were awful. Well, you're talking Harvard, dude. I no, know, I know. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, right? I guess they thought I had enough time to, to turn it around. But then I ended up doing decently at the end of uh, my Canadian school. And so I was in online school and, uh, when I went to Youngstown. But yeah, Dartmouth and Harvard were both they, talking to me throughout the whole process that's cool yeah, okay sorry just curious go keep yeah so those schools were on you but yeah. uh so um i guess you go to youngstown um but like so when does it get serious when do you start do you do any visits yeah so i so i actually only visited three schools i went uh my first year in youngstown when did i get i'm trying to think here yeah my first year youngstown was when i did the visit so i was Playing Youngstown, I went to visit Denver, who was interested. And then I was also, I loved Dartmouth. I went to their campus. Um, phenomenal, by the way. Dartmouth Where is that? Uh, Connecticut, maybe? Northern? Some, around there. I, I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know where it is. Yeah, exactly. And then I, I saw Cornell, too, because that was a drive from Cornwall, which I did in the summer one time. Cornell's got a, a sweet barn, though. Yeah, it was really cool. They're in Ithaca, New York, which is a very small town. Yeah, so that was like the only thing. But I guess Maine is too. At the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm curious how you chose Maine. Um, so yeah. okay, let uh, yeah, tell me. Well, how did you choose Maine from Alpharetta? Because that's kind of like it's kind of like choosing Cornwall, right? Kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. So like same process. So all those visits, I ended up going to Denver. Cornell, Dartmouth, and then I think I went to Harvard too and, and toured that with my aunt and uncle now that I'm calling. Um, and then I also went to Maine too, um, which was, uh, so you know, you know how, I'm not sure how you chose or the process you went through, but it's just some, some clicks with a campus and you're like, oh, this is it. Like, I think, I think yep. I know I'm familiar, right? Uh, and uh, it's, it's the campus um, for it, for me, it was the campus, but it was also how much they want you, right? Like yeah. you can tell how bad a team wants you by the way they talk to you, by the way yeah. they call you, by the way they talk to you after a game. Like you can tell when they really want you. And it's the same in pro. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And that was another big factor. Like those other schools were very interested. I just felt like Maine too. I would have been, I had way more opportunity there, even if we weren't as good, like, had I gone to Denver, would have won a national championship, right? But I didn't, um, and I ended up here, and I think I was supposed to go to Maine for a lot of different reasons. But, you know, I think the coaching staff, you know, Red, Gite, Alfie Michaud, uh, Jay Leach is, was big in recruiting me. He was only there my freshman year, and then he left. But uh, they were instrumental in getting me there, and they pretty much catered to whatever I, I wanted, which was awesome. Um, and then I was also had a huge role in the team, so I couldn't have asked for anything else. And I felt like I was going to have that opportunity if I went to Maine, whereas at the other schools, I felt like, you know, I might've been a smaller fish in a bigger pond. Uh, yeah. And it's, it was, for me, I was always, I was always wondering when I was playing at Western Michigan, I was putting up really big years. I was like, would I be doing this if I was playing for Michigan or Michigan state? Yeah. Like, would I even be on the power play? Like, exactly. And then, you know, you're putting up 40, 50 points at Western Michigan, but you're like, I don't even know if I'm on the power play, if I'm on that team, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it's, a, it's a, you get the opportunity. It's like, hey, if I go to BU, great, I'll be at BU. But, like, am I going to play first line? No, probably not. At least my first or second year, no, right? But um, yeah, well, and then there's the, if you're from Boston or not, and there's all the other stuff that goes along with schools like that. And there's a lot going into those decisions. That's why I was curious. And I'm not even going to bring up one of your coaches yet, which was my former teammate, also gold helmet list. Um, right. But, um, okay, your final two years in Youngstown, though, you so you get you do the 
you said you go to Maine and you just know that's it. I had the same experience at Western Michigan. I went yeah. to Northeastern and Boston and I'm like, this city is way too big for me. I am way too much of a small town boy for this. Yeah. And then I go to Kalamazoo and there's farmer's fields and like it's smaller and it's, yeah. yeah and yeah. it just fit. But then they wanted me badly. Um, so then how, I guess, when do you actually decide? When do you pull the trigger on Maine? Yeah. So, you know, I say I clicked like, yeah, I clicked, but it wasn't at the moment I was there. Right. I was kind of, it took me a little bit after that too. Cause I was like really nervous. I was like, Oh, this is a big decision. Do I go Ivy league and have to pay some for the college, but then get that degree or do I, you know, go on a scholarship. And there's a lot of things that go into that, as you know. Um, so all of that came into play. And then I was actually at the NHL combine and I just made a decision. I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to Maine. Yeah, I was like, I had at the NHL Combine. I did, yeah, yeah. Uh, fun <laughs> fact for the the Potters out there, and for you, is the day I committed to Western Michigan, or like that weekend, they came to watch me after I said, verbally said, like, "Yeah, I'm coming." That yeah. game, I scored a few goals, and Maine was waiting outside the locker room for me, and then Western <laughs> was like, "Hey, man, like." we we got him yesterday <laughs> yeah yeah That's so hilarious. yeah no so I like I, it, it's funny because Maine like when I hear about the place and I played there and I saw the arena if they would have brought me there on a recruiting trip man I don't know if I would have been able to contain myself because that old barn with the band playing up top during the game yeah. like, I get goosebumps I get goosebumps right now just thinking about it it's it I've never experienced and will never experience anything like that in my the rest of my life I agree like well if you play in if you play in like Germany man oh, it, I'm, it, sure, I'm sure there's some some barns there that are pretty packed yeah you play in the NHL though bud sorry you're gonna make more money but the fans ain't gonna be like that <laughs> uh, yeah I hear you I hear you <laughs> Exactly. yeah no 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 that, yeah but if you go to europe someday after a long tenure in the nhl then you'll see some nuts fans again it's yeah. wild I've heard, I've heard some stories from over there yeah yeah um okay i got sidetracked again but uh so anyways youngstown your second year then i don't mm -hmm. know if you ever told me when you actually decided maine but um, you had a big year your last year. So when is, yeah, that was, so, so I decided Maine my, my summer going into my second year. So that was yeah. the so then you got all the confidence, you got so, your yeah, ride, yeah. your set. Yeah. I did the same thing, man. My last year, junior, I had a hell of a year and it was, I had my scholarship. I had my full ride and I was just having fun with the boys. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, so I actually, that summer it's like combine committed and then I got drafted then Maine wanted me to finish my high school that summer and go in a year before I was supposed to. And I just, I told them, I was like, that's too much. Like, I know I want to go back to Youngstown for one more year and just take my time. Right. So I did, I did what you did and went back. Um, and you gain a lot of confidence by doing that. You play bigger role. You, yeah. you, you get more minutes, right? Like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Everything about the second year was, was awesome. I mean, the, I think the first year we had a better team. But the set, you know, the second year I had more of an opportunity and uh, I feel like I ran with it. And then going into college, I had a lot of confidence, which is great. Yeah. And uh, OK, so I guess then we are going to Maine now um, yeah. and uh, we'll bring it up now is Alfie Misho. I won a gold helmet with him. Yeah. Wow. Al, yeah. yeah, he's a great guy. He was, he was one of my favorites. He's, a, he's an awesome, awesome person. Yeah, I'd love to have him on the pot if he wants to come on. I don't know if Maine allows that or what, but uh, he's came up a few times. Um, but he's he was – I think I looked it up. He was a goaltending coach when you were there, and now he's like a full eight assistant coach, right? Yeah, so I think he has a bigger role now because of the, the new staff that came in. Uh, this actually, I think this is the first year. But uh, he was goalie coach my, my years there, so – uh kind of talk to him right but then i don't still... i didn't talk to the goalie coach when i was in school not well, at all wouldn't, right but he's uh he's one of those goalies that aren't super weird as a stereotype would say from hockey. let's try playing with him bud <laughs> they got their first <laughs> trade but he's i thought he was a great guy no he was a great guy awesome dude but no he like he uh the day of games 
I guess you would never see this because no, he, he doesn't play games anymore. But yeah. when he was the goalie, the day of games, he didn't talk to anybody. Like nobody. There was only one defenseman he talked to. And it was like he well, like in in pregame skate, the only time he talked to me, like is if I was taking the the shots from the blue line. And if I wasn't shooting it hard enough, or if I didn't hit the net, if I started throwing muffins at him, he'd be screaming at me. Game day, pregame skate. I'm staying out to help him out. Oh my goodness. That's insane. Oh, I don't I'd say it is insane. Actually, that's pretty crazy. Well, that's just goalies, man. That's but he, goalies, though. Yeah, they all have their quirks, right? That's whether it's game day or off the ice somewhere else. I feel like if no, you're but, if you're a person who wants the little rubber biscuit shot a hundred miles an hour at your face, like you got to have some kind of screw that's loose. But for sure, no, yeah, you're right. Uh, but he was one of my favorite goalies I ever played with because when it, like. When, when you were relying on your goalie to have it come the big games, man, that guy in the playoffs, he was the biggest competitor. I, one of the biggest competitors of goalie I played with, and he was always ready. I sat beside him stalls that year and he had a notepad, man. And he had written down about every player and their power play and like their tendencies and where they'd pass or shoot. And then you're like, yeah, it makes sense. He's a coach now. Yeah, I mean, he's really detail oriented. He was always like that at Maine, right? Too same same type thing. Had the pre scout on the on the goalies and everything was just immaculate. I mean, you just hey, look at this. Look where he's weak. This is where you could score. Right? And, I'm like, all right, I'll take what he's and with an increased role, he was watching all of it as a goalie. He he yeah. knows a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's always cool to talk to guys like that too, right? The goalies, especially as a player now, I, you talk to the goalie coaches, which sometimes. Yeah, you gotta keep them on track there, but they uh they're invaluable, right? Because they played and they know weaknesses where to shoot. So to have them too, I mean, and always have those conversations with coming and talking to guys like that. It was it was really cool. Yeah, no, he was he was a good one, and it was fun winning with him. And um, so that was in Denmark. Yeah, that's right. I was there. I played his last game. I was sitting beside him. We won the championship, and then he sat there in his equipment for hours actually wow yeah wow. for like the first half hour or so he was crying beside me mm -hmm. um and like i was like is is, is he happy because we won is he crying because he's retiring um is do i hug crazy? him what yeah. do i do <laughs> i'm really <laughs> happy <laughs> uh but no yeah i was there with him that last game and man he was a beauty he took yeah. care of me, getting me transitioned to Denmark out of Germany. Um, mm -hmm. Great teammate. Um, and I'm sure he's an awesome coach for the boys now. Yeah, yeah, he was when I was there. I'm sure he still is. Um, and the other main black bear, or I guess I think might be the only main black bear we've had on other than you is Michelle Levelle. Ever heard of him? No. No, he was a captain there as well, but he uh, is running some arena in Maine now. Yeah, wow, you know where in Maine? Oh, I, I, you'd have to. He was a potter. You'd have to listen to it. But his wife uh, was from there, and he's okay. he, yeah. Anyways, moving on. Um, your freshman year, you scored fourteen goals. That's pretty good as a as a freshie, eh? Yeah, yeah. I had a good year my freshman year. I think, uh, I, like I said, I got a lot of opportunity though. So, so uh, what were you playing? Like second line? Yeah, second line. Second much power play. Yeah, yes. Yeah, first, second power play, probably mixed back and forth. So I was uh, really all over the place. Really? Eh? And yeah. that's, yeah, that means they wanted you. And when you got there, but, but yeah. yeah, that that's a good start. So when were you drafted to the Red Wings? Well, that was after my first year in Youngstown, actually. So what? Yeah, I was drafted my first year in Youngstown. And then I went back for one more year at USHL. And then I went to school. Yeah. So you were drafted after the first year. So the same time you're getting your scholarship, you're getting drafted to the NHL. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Got it all figured out now. Oh, um, that makes sense in your head. Yeah, I got her down now. Um, never got drafted, so I didn't really put the years together. Can't yeah. picture it. <laughs> um, okay, so then uh, did you think the Red Wings, were you at the draft, or how do you find out you're drafted? Did you, yeah, you obviously knew you were going to be. 
I mean, yeah, you, you think, right? Because I went to the combine. I had good talks with a bunch of different teams um, to think it was Detroit. I never really thought it would be Detroit. Uh, I don't Navigating know. lieutenant again. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I never really thought it would be Detroit, but uh, I thought it was going to be Florida or Boston, to be honest. Um, and then Detroit selected me, and it was just, yeah, I was at the draft. I was in Florida at the BB&T Center. My family was all there and yeah, fifth round. So it was great. I went to go down and shake hands. All the, the GM, Ken Holland at the time and Chris Draper, all those guys were at the table. So it was, it was surreal at the time. And now I, looking back on it, it's just, I mean, I'll cherish that moment forever. It was really, really cool. That, yeah, that that's awesome that you got to do that. And yeah, you're, you're young then, eh? So you're, how old are you when you get drafted these days? 19? I was 17. Turning 17 you get drafted. It's turning 18. Yeah. Yeah. I was because the draft was draft for you in June. Normal and without COVID and all this crap that's going on. Yeah, I think so. June sounds right. Yeah, yeah it's my birthday is August. So I was 17. Yeah. Wow. That's that. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool when you're 17 and you're getting drafted to the NHL. I couldn't imagine. Yeah. It was wild. Okay. So then uh, your, your first year, your second year, are you any good at Maine? Is the team any good? So my first year, we struggled quite a bit. Uh, we were better than the previous year, but we still struggled um, quite a bit. And then my, my sophomore year, we were pretty good. You know, we, we made a run for it. We didn't make it to Hockey East finals or anything, but I, we made playoffs and lost uh, first round to, I think, Vermont that year. But, uh, but yeah, we definitely made strides forward, especially the third year um, I was there. But, yeah, I mean... I think Maine, the biggest thing was the rank and recruiting. And, you know, they had all those great years in the 90s when they won with Korea. And then those two teams that were just, I mean, probably one of the best college hockey teams ever. They went 42-1-1 one and one or something crazy, right? I don't, I don't know which year that is. I played against them when, like, Doyle and um, the Howard were the goalies, I think. Oh, that was what, 05, 06? Yeah, around then, yeah. Around that time, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that was a little after they, they had – Maybe time. earlier. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I definitely played against both of those goalies, though, while they okay. were there. Yeah, yeah. So they – I mean, those had great teams, but they were kind of going through a transition phase, too, when I was recruited. And then um, I think they've been – getting better recruiting classes ever since I, my, I would like to say my class is the one that kind of turned it around. Right. No, uh, that that's good that it did. Cause mine went the opposite way at Western Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was going downhill. <laughs> yeah. That was like on the way to like the coach getting fired a few years later and the whole thing. No. Um, yeah, no, that that's awesome. That means getting better. Cause it was cool when I played there and they were a powerhouse and they were ranked and, the arena was rocking and the band was playing. And I thought the, that arena was really cool, man. Yeah. The, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing like it. Like the student section hanging over the opposing team zone and warmups. And then like the, your teams are crammed in these little locker rooms right underneath the stands and there's no room. And it's just very uncomfortable for the away team. Um, and the rinks packed, right. Like it's just, I don't know. It's hard to describe unless you've been there. No, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was my freshman year when I went. Definitely, it was the start of my freshman year. It was one of my first road games in college hockey, and I was like, yeah, "Wow, the- holy crap! This is a hard. This is what my college career is going to be like. What the heck?" Oh yeah, no, like, and and they were so good, and um, yeah, it was a tough weekend, but uh, the Broncos battled. Okay, um, <laughs> here's a random question again. What is your most embarrassing moment at Maine? Oh, wow. <laughs> got a lot of embarrassing moments. Seems um, like there should be one that's going to come yeah, up. Yeah. Is, is there one? Yeah. So the one that I think I should say is freshman year, you're supposed to learn the Stein song, which I, I don't know if you guys had one at Western Michigan. It's kind of a song that. Like the fight song? Yeah, like the fight song. Like ours is like, Phil the sign to the dear old man, shout out to the Raptors ring, that kind of thing. Don't ask me what ours is. Anyways, okay. anyways, yeah, so- fight on, fight on for <laughs> Western. <laughs> Take the puck down the ice, score goal. Yeah, uh, I know what yeah, you're talking so, about. 
Yeah, so we're supposed to memorize this as freshmen coming in, and that's like part of our thing to build the culture of the team or whatever. Uh, so one day we're working out, and Red goes. Red comes down from his office, and he goes, "Okay, everybody, but Chase, come into the locker room." So I'm sitting in I'm sitting in the weight room alone. Everyone else in the locker room, and I get in, and then someone comes and gets me or whatever. I walk down and go in the locker room, and I he's like, "Okay, son." say that too okay son stand up there in the front and he's like sing the sign song and this was like the second week we're there and i'm like oh my god i have no idea so i literally just started singing something random and then he goes that's not it and then everyone started throwing pennies at me all the players so when i was in the rate room he had given pennies out to all of the other teammates and he's like if he can't sing it you, you toss these at him so it wasn't a throw. They tossed the pennies at me. And then he's like, you need to learn this by tomorrow. And he said, we'll be back here. So I'm just sitting up there, freshman, absolutely like. Scared, yeah. Scared, and, scared chill is. Right? Yeah, when you're a freshman, you're pretty scared. Like yeah, So intimidated. And then I, obviously you go through all the stuff and team building and everything and you get included. But that was super embarrassing for me. And my face was flush red. And that's uh, two weeks in? Yeah, two or three weeks. They must have known you could take it, though, because they're not going to – some guys wouldn't be able to handle that, right? They knew you could handle that. Yeah, like I wouldn't have been very butthurt or anything about it, right? I was just more like, all right, I got to learn this damn song. (laughs) No, and that's – the thing is, some guys that, like, are maybe a touch – I don't know if shy or, like, just – awkward whatever it is like no that like why had coaches that would tell me that like they're gonna give it to me every video session because they know i can take it and that they want to make these points and they're like but you're gonna be able to handle it and it sounds like something similar with that you know yeah yeah. so that that's pretty much what it was right and they're probably like all right he can take it you know yeah we got to prove a point that these freshies got to get in line and uh this guy can take it yeah, yeah, they would just make a point out of me. I was like, okay, fine. The Jake. Chevelle, right? Chevelle, yeah. Chevelle. Chevelle, or Chevelle yeah. Che- yeah. Um, okay, well, yeah, that would be embarrassing. Okay. I want to know what it was like getting named as a captain as a sophomore because I – sorry for burping again, folks. But um, my – a guy I know or my second podcast ever, Lavecchio – was a uh, right after I left became a sophomore captain and it's special people like the true leaders that become like a sophomore captain. Um, we had actually two of them at Western Michigan, Dana lottery, I think was one too, but like those guys, like as soon as they show up to school, you're just like, Oh yeah, this guy's the Cheval. <laughs> but when, um, when you're in Maine and there's such a rich history, um, like, that's got to mean something, right? When you talk like Korea and you talk about the players they've had through that system. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, it's special. I mean, to this day too, it's something I look back, I'll always be proud of it. I'm obviously wasn't really expecting anything. You've gone in my sophomore year and the team votes on it and I was getting voted in and that was, yeah, I was at a loss of words. I didn't even really even understand because I've, I was so young still, or I thought I was young. And there was these older guys that, you know, I'm, I'm their captain now as this young kid. So, um, it was um, good. okay. So this is just for fun. Uh, okay. I think I, I can uh, give player reviews based on how they podcast. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to this one. Do you want it now or later? Do it now. Let's, let's right just, now. Okay. Cause do you think I figured it, you out yet? I, that's up to you. I don't know. I, I I feel like I'm a pretty open book, but. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I think you play center. I think you're very responsible defensively. Um, I think you're always um, like you're a mature player. You're always making the right plays. Um, you're not risking too much. Um, you, you do what's right. You do what the coach wants you to do. Um, but all the boys on the team really like you because you're not that guy that uh, is too much about it. You're just playing the way you play hockey. Um, but you're a second line center. Um, if if your team's going to win the championship, you're on the second power play. If your team's all right, you're on the first. Um, 
but uh, you're going to be on the first PK and uh, and you're probably going to play against the other team's top lines. How would I do? That's pretty spot on. Good Boom. job. Nailed Honestly, it. You pretty much nailed it. You pretty much nailed it. Yeah. yeah. See, told you I could do it. That was pretty good. How do you, it was like you've done this before, eh? Well, I pod with people twice a week, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But no, like I, I and I played against most of the people or with the guys, but yeah. no, there was a guy that taught me that you can do that. And it's, it's like why NHL teams interview players and mm -hmm. um, why they do that is because you can tell a lot by people's personalities, how they play hockey, because they play hockey like their personality, right? That's actually an interesting point that I've never really ever thought about. But I mean, you think some guys now, it makes sense. Yeah, and you always told you told me at the start that you were uh, very self motivated, mm -hmm. and uh, that like when I was texting back and forth with <laughs> with Nesbitt today, he was yeah. like, "Tell him to loosen up a bit." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got that too. Whereas I can be a little, yeah, like a little too. Uh... And that's when I was like, that's why he's always making the right plays. He's always on the defensive yeah. side of the puck. He's always yeah. where like where coaches want you to be, right? Yeah, you're not you're not taking risks you're not flying the no, zone no so well i mean as you get older right now too is like even any league like the first first time i was in youngstown in cornwall in maine i was like scared shitless i was like i just don't want to fuck up or excuse me mess up uh but yeah i don't i don't want to mess up and the second year you have a little more leeway so i like to take a little more risk now but you know we get an nhl crack i'm just gonna make the simple play and I'm not going to overcomplicate anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing is, is like the NHL, it's interesting, right? Because there's guys have roles and that everybody has a role and you have to do something very well to kind of stick or stay or like have your spot. And I'm yeah. thinking you're, you know, I don't know. What do you, what do you think you are? I think you're, a, you're, a, if you're making the show, you're a third line center, um, you're penalty killing. And, um, if they need you on the power play, you can, you can do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Like face offs are a big thing for me. I'm like, that's a big thing. PK. That's huge it's, to have that in your toolbox. Yeah. Third, fourth line center, probably in the NHL. And that's uh, yeah, that, that'll definitely be my role. And I, I'd like to think I could contribute offensively at some point, but I, I don't know. I'm not going to be relied upon to go out and score all the big goals. Like <laughs> some guys are. Yeah, no, I, 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 I get it. And I, 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 I can tell by talking to you, you're, you're going to do her. So anyways, there you go. That's folks. That's how Wally can do a player review after, uh, I don't know how long we've been doing this, maybe an hour. Yeah, and, uh, there's my player review after one hour of chatting with chase. Yeah. yeah that's pretty good. You write those down. No, that was that. I I had an idea beforehand by looking at everything, but I but now once I talk to you, that that's there you go. Yeah, just confirmation bias. Okay. Um. So we talked about you becoming a captain at that school. Um. But then, uh, so you do that. Did you feel any more pressure as a sophomore? Like, did you feel like it was uh, like a lot as a sophomore to try and like be the leader for the seniors and stuff? Honestly. I kind of just let it come to me. I didn't try and be that guy to like boss people around or like I'm better than everyone. I just kind of let it flow. and Because uh, they they voted you based on yeah, how like, you were as a person. Yeah. And you don't have to be someone you're not. Yeah. You, know, you obviously take on more responsibility, like just organizing stuff and making sure guys are cool and whatever. But I mean, I'm not going to tell a 25-year-old senior to, to fucking whatever. I don't know. It's hard. I can't really think of an example, but I'm just kind of be myself and lead by example. I'm not really going to be super vocal to, to guys like that when I have to be at a wood, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of just led by example and was myself and had my own personality, I guess. Yeah, no, and that's cool. Um, it sounds like you were growing up at a young age. Like for me, I, I wasn't like that in college. They gave me the assistant captain. They're like, yeah, you you can bring the boys together, but like, you know, you're the assistant <laughs> the captain, right? You just bring the boys together. <laughs> yeah, not the real captain, but okay. So your third year then is when you really start doing her. Um, 16 goals plus 21. You win best defensive forward and a second team all-star. So that's uh, that's a serious season. Yeah, that was 
that was my best season statistically. And I think just all around, you know, we had a good team. Um, the guys bought in. I mean, we didn't win the championship or anything, but I think for what we had and what we accomplished, it helped me as a team, right? I, like I was. Well, it like, does. Winning, I, winning helps and people notice yeah. winning. Yeah. So like we, we won quite a bit and it's compared to previous years, but you know, I was playing first line minutes, power play PK. I was I was the guy. I was like the guy there. So it was, uh, it's fun I, being the guy, I, I isn't it? Rope. I had a big rope and I tried to use as much of it as I could. You had a big rope. I very phrased that terribly wrong. And I hope no, that... no that's fine. We're just letting the folks know he had a big <laughs> rope. <laughs> Sorry. So, no, has ha, no, had. what had, had Oh, I that's used... with the coaches. That's with red. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all right. Sorry, not your yeah. actual rope. It was your rope oh. with red. Yeah, with red, not not my actual. not not your rope. Not my rope. That no. is unconfirmed size, folks. Past tense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there we go. Okay, yeah. now we understand. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I yeah, no, you're right though. And like when you're the guy and like mm -hmm. and you're you're trusted in every situation, like your your confidence goes up, you yeah. you you care. It's weird because like when you're on the teams where the fourth line guy isn't a normal fourth line guy and they don't care like they should, and then you play with the fourth line guys that know they're a fourth liner and they care as much as the first liner. Mm -hmm. Um when I, it was weird for me. Cause like when I was playing in every situation and doing all of it, you like, you were more into it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you just like, you get into a flow of a game. Right. And the more you play, the more you get into it. And I feel like the better you play, like when I'm playing my best, I'm playing a lot. Yeah. Every, and I, yeah, I was the same for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's guys that actually know how to be a fourth liner and they're like, I'm good with just like my, my six shifts a night that I'm good. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to chip it in. But then you ask guys that aren't like, for me, I was a skill guy. So like you asked me to do that. I haven't touched the puck all night. I've been sitting here. I'm like, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I'm going to dump it in and get off. Like, you know, I'm, it's not my game. Yeah, it's tough, but no, like, I don't think you're going to be on any teams where you're not playing a lot because any coach is going to play us. So I don't think you have that to worry about. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, causing a kerfuffle for the other team's top players and scoring some goals. I can tell. Um, okay. Anyway, so you do really well. So what's the decision to leave school? I think it's just, a, you know, they thought I was ready and I kind of sat down and, so they came to you and said, yeah. we think you're ready. Yeah. Was, there was just ongoing discussions. So that paired with, you know, a lot of conversations with my dad and then people close to me and um, obviously the opportunity to what they were offering. And I was just, I think I was ready. I think it was time. I think I'd done all I could do at college um, as far as developing as a player. And I was ready to make the jump. And so I signed with Detroit after my junior year. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And yeah, like you knew that's what you wanted, right? Like it's, yeah. it, it is, it, was it hard to like tell your buddies like, Hey, I'm leaving school. Kind of, but not really. Like they probably had an idea it was coming anyways. Right. Yeah, I and mean, After that the year, we had a couple of meetings, a couple of guys that signed, you know, they were just, obviously the coaching staff wants you back. Right. But at the same time they get it. So, uh, you know, I, I really was up in the air for a while. I, I wanted to go back and then, at the end of the day, I was like, I just can't turn this down. My dream is to been to play in the NHL since I was, you know, seven, eight years old. And I can't wait. I can't wait till you do it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, me neither. And then this is another just one more step in the road. And I was like, if this maybe it's not there after next year and I have a terrible year. Right. So I was like, I had a good year and I'm just going to I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with the decision and it by the stats and talking to you you were definitely ready mm. um okay so then uh so then what is it like adapting from school to pro nowadays because like when i went yeah. when i went to the ahl i'm not joking the, uh, we had six heavyweights that were i you could call it roided up maybe it was natural maybe it wasn't but yeah. they were very ginormous people and um there weren't many skilled jobs around 
Mm-hmm. And um, it was so different than college, man. I honestly didn't know where I was. I'd never played hockey like that before. Um, what was it? But like now it's different, right? What was, what was the transition like for you? Yeah. So I think for me, I was obviously very timid and nervous going into my first training camp. I was excited, but at the same time, I was like, wow. This You're is saying crazy. training camp though. Cause you, but you didn't, you leave school to go oh, play sorry, right away. Sorry. Yeah. I forgot. I just completely missed the first part of my, my hockey career for a pro. Yeah. So you, I, I, yeah. You played 10 games. You would left yeah. like, so I left my senior year and played six games, but you left and played 10 yeah, and signed true. with them. You're signed. So did that burn yeah. a year of a contract? No. So the way I did, I didn't play NHL games. If I played NHL games right when I signed, that would have burned the first year, but I didn't do that. So I, I just signed and I went directly to Grand Rapids, the American League team. And I flew from Orono to Texas in the American League. I don't know if you played there. Um, in Texas. No. No, I had a cup of coffee in the AHL. So I fly there and I'm get to the hotel and everything and check in. I'm and I get there and I'm like, wow, this is American League. Holy cow, right? Like this is amazing. In Texas, you're at this domain, it's this beautiful place with shops and this nice hotel and the rink's great. And then it's like, wow, it's awesome. And then it's like, okay, we fly back to Grand Rapids. Oh, I could get used to this city. And then it's like, okay, now we're busing to uh to Milwaukee for four hours, right? And then it's like, okay. Now you got to bus home and play a back-to-back home game after playing that last night and you're going to sleep for about seven hours on the bus. <laughs> it's like, Oh my goodness. Yeah. No, the, the schedule, the scheduling is a whole different thing. It was, yeah. There's no, I mean, if, unless you play in, in, in a minor league hockey, hockey league, you have no idea how no, and like I, the AHL was better than the East Coast. Like there, there was a time I'm pretty sure we played five games in six days. That's, that is just that's not healthy. Like that. What? What? No, it wasn't healthy. I think that's illegal now. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> no, I think they did make rules right to stop yeah. that shit. <laughs> I'm sure they did. Yeah. No, but the traveling and like. I guess you were somewhat used to it, though, growing up in Atlanta and getting on plane rides for minor yeah. hockey games, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could say I'm used. It's a little different, you know, you, you travel around. Okay, you here's go. a question about minor hockey I never asked. Yeah, is, it. did you fly to tournaments and play tournaments? Was anybody flying to Atlanta to play you guys? So we would not get many teams fly to us. It would mostly be us fly to a tournament or we right. drive to, you know, Nashville florida carolinas um and they would come to us too so those and then you'd host a tournament with the three teams so we would host tournaments with like tph and all those teams in the southeast right yeah Uh, you're not you're not playing hockey games on tuesday nights after work (laughs) no no it's a weekend move for for all of us in atlanta yeah you play that's it yeah okay sorry i got i was just for i don't know why that came up okay sorry moving on so you go there and you play 10 games in the AHL. What, uh, like how your first game, like you're leaving school, you're going there. Like what's the first game? Like, I just didn't know what to expect. So I watched, I got there and then like late Friday night or something or Thursday and they played Friday. So I didn't play Friday. I played Saturday. Um, so I, I watched the game Friday. I was like, wow, this looks like a pretty good pace, right? Like it's American league. And then, Saturday, I get put in and I'm a minus one or something, right? It's just a complete wake up call. I'm like, wow, this is. But what? So, like, how many minutes did you play? Were you playing like what third line? Were you playing center? I think I played fourth line center my first game or something. Do they? Are you allowed to play four lines in the AHL now? Yeah, it's four lines. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we were allowed to play one less than that. So every team's fourth line was a left and right winger, and then you'd mix them in if you had to. Oh my gosh. So you'd have three lines and then they just wouldn't play really. And, and I'd be on the fourth line with a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I played 19 games, zero points. Pretty good yeah. time. One fight. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. I went to Europe right after. <laughs> you did really well in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was, uh, I, that was my type of league over yeah. there, but yeah. anyways, where were we? Yeah. So I played about, um, I don't know, probably, 12 minutes, 14 minutes, maybe. If that well, that's means- not bad. Like, so did you get some penalty kill time and stuff right yeah, away? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they tossed me on there, brought me through the ropes at least, and maybe a shift or two, but not much. And then 
I, you know, play, as I kept going, I think we took a, a out west trip to San Jose and stuff too after that. Um, so I did that. And then I kept playing a little more and more. And then playoffs, uh, I didn't play playoffs because it was end of the year and they were pretty much locked in at the end. So. So then you went back to school because, yeah, like um, when the playoffs happen in the AHL and then the guys come back from the show and everything, you, you realize how many guys have played in the AHL for a year. Because when I was there, Columbus wasn't making the playoffs. So yeah. then all the guys came down to Syracuse and like it was like it was like half their NHL team was in the yeah, AHL. It's a total, totally different squad. And yeah, the but if their, te- if their NHL team – is in the playoffs, then, then they don't have anybody. The cupboards are bare. <laughs> yep. It's such a crazy, man, because everyone gets called. They're all up, and, you know, just in case you need someone in the NHL, right, or whatever, black acing, they call it. Yeah. No, it's a weird league, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know where I am now other than here's a fun fact for you then is uh, I don't know if he's been your coach both years, but uh, Ben Simon was also my former teammate. You played with Ben Simon. Is he your head coach now? Yeah, he's my head coach both years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was during my dark times in Syracuse there when I played like six games. He was on the team. He was like an assistant captain. He was a defensive forward, third yeah. line center, yeah. rat out. He was not a rat, but he was, he was causing kerfuffles. The other team hated him. His yeah. team loved him. Yeah, that's that you need those guys. Yeah. He, yeah. My, yeah, he's he's a great coach. I mean, he's helped me develop. He's uh very detailed, like one of the hardest working people I've ever met as far as coaching. He was the same as a player, he's one of the hardest working players I've ever seen. Yeah, like he the details this guy puts into every day at the rank and pre-scouts video, it's yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. That I'm sure. Sounds like Andrew Lord for, that I played with in Cardiff. That's now on the coast. Like it sounds, yeah. he like it sounds like they both were the hardest working players I played with, and I, I did actually had no idea Ben Simon was still a coach. I knew he was yeah. the player coach in Sheffield, and then I found the new button that says like where the coaches are. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw that today and I was like, huh, oh, because I was looking for Elfie. <laughs> I was oh, trying to wow. figure out if Elfie was actually your coach. Yeah. And I figured out where to look. And then I yeah. saw that uh, Ben Simon was your coach. And yeah, mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. was one of my wake up calls to pro was I jumped in his truck um, to go to the practice rink. And there were car seats in the back and like children's oh, shoes goodness. and gloves. And yeah. I imagine his kids are very they're they got to be old now yeah, but they yeah. were little buggers when i when i was getting a ride to practice rink that's unreal yeah that's yeah that's a long time ago for him i guess uh-huh. and, you, and you yeah yeah we were not all as young as you bud i'll be there one day don't worry <laughs> it happens fast i'm sure it does that's why i'm soaking up every minute of this I well can't. you better because yeah. soon you'll be podcasting um um, okay but no it's cool that you got a head coach that kind of plays like you know defensive forward and all that good stuff right um so he probably has helped you because he's played a similar role than i but i guess you're playing like first line in the hl now now the site my second year yeah are we in your second year now yeah that's what i guess yeah like your 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 second year you're what second or third on the team in scoring? Yeah, yeah. So I, I had a pretty good year last year. Um, I obviously the first year kind of bid your time, right? And then it helps having the returning coaching staff. So that really helped me. Like they they trusted me, and Benny knows what kind of player I am now. So I got more opportunity this year, power play and stuff. And um, I, I'm always up and down the lineup. You know, started fourth line this year and kind of worked my way up a little bit and got more opportunity. And I think that that enabled me to you know, showcase that I can play at that level. That's awesome that you, yeah. you're doing that. Like it's, it's one of those leagues. It's weird that like there's guys that show up and you know, they get a little taste and you, they never really take it, but it sounds like you've taken it and you're, you've shown you're there and you're here to play. Um, so like last year, I also saw, I think it was the pictures you sent. It was like, 
reassigned a taxi squad or I think I googled you so like what was that like getting taxi squatted like how many bag skates are involved in that shit actually zero for me so I got taxi squatted for one night and uh I drove from Grand Rapids to Detroit watched an NHL game and then drove back to Grand Rapids to play the next uh next day or two or whatever so oh they, just in case they needed me there or something right it was like and I drove there, watched the game, and drove back. Oh, okay. No, yeah. I, I just that saw that. I didn't know if you were, like, part of it, and they just got bag skated all the time. But you're too young. They need you playing. Yeah, I guess they want me playing. And they're like, if you're not up in the NHL, that's what at least I'm saying. I'd like to think I could have played in the NHL. But, hey, hopefully I get a crack this year. No, I, I, uh, I, I hope so, too. I think it would be so cool um, <laughs> that a guy that came on my podcast played in the NHL <laughs> afterwards – that's yeah, that's making me legit dude hey you'll be having a lot younger guys on here hey i you you know what and now that i've i think i've proven i can talk to your generation you now can. you can you can uh pluck me into the social pipeline you know you yeah. know you, you can, can get me in there yeah, well you're already in the atlanta pipeline with nesbitt and, and me and that's right and now i just got to get into your generation you know the 24 year olds and we <laughs> we can take over the world <laughs> there you go, there you go. yeah and fun fact we're opening up a 6 a.m slot before i start work where i will not be allowed to drink beers um <laughs> just to get overseas players on because i think we got to get a little more international around here yeah yeah yeah, and the time change is a bitch when you have a real job. That's it, six hours or something over there in Europe? Yeah, six to Europe, five to the UK. And, mm. uh, you know, it's tough when, like, you're done work at a certain time, but then you've worked all day and you're like, well, your kids are ready for you, so you can't really jump on a pod after. So, <laughs> exactly. yeah, it's really jamming me up here. So I think 6 a.m. is the, the ticket. Maybe 5.30. Yeah, coffees, coffees. Okay, anyways. I was curious about the bag skates, but you're playing first line in the AHL. So that's way more fun than bag skating taxi squad. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess one other question I had for younger bucks like you is how much player development guys are there now? Like how much do they talk to you in the off season? So a lot of that is uh, as I was coming up in juniors and even in college, right? You have Sean Horkoff, uh, Dan Cleary, those guys are, they've been, I've been in contact with them for, you know, four or five years now as I've made my transition to pro. And then they've been around Grand Rapids quite a bit. Um, so they've, they've helped, you know, they watched my games, broken down shifts, giving me tips on this and that and, and what to add to my game. Right. Um, and then there's also skating coaches that would come into Grand Rapids as well. So they would, they would come in probably once a week, once every, or not once a week, probably once every three weeks. And, we do like an hour session with them and just fundamentals and stuff. And then I have stuff to take home for the summer too, to work on. So that stuff has been instrumental for me. Oh, also I forgot Nerado, Brandon Nerado. I don't know if you know him. I but, don't. Uh, yeah. So he actually got hired a Michigan assistant coach, but he was been doing a lot of skill stuff, um, shooting and different offensive zone tactics and, and different things for GR and Detroit for the last few years. So that's been super nice too, because he gives, different way to think about the game yeah no I, I you hear about some of the stuff like it's weird for me because i was out of the game for like five years like totally out really yeah. and uh, then when i start this you're just way more in in tune with what's going on in hockey and it's been really fun and you hear about guys doing stuff like that and teaching hockey differently than the way i was taught and then like I remember hearing the one was like, well, why do you start drills? Like, I don't know, I forget what it was facing the net or turned around backwards because in a game, that's not how you enter the zone. That's not how it starts. You don't start like facing the glass with the puck, right? <laughs> with no options. And then it's like, okay, defenseman, come get them now. <laughs> yeah, we'll go, we'll go with that, right? Yeah. Yeah, but no, like I was just curious with having a young buck on today is like how the game's changed. And um, I don't know, it doesn't sound like much is that different. Well, I, I, I mean, from where I know from when my dad played, the game's gotten a lot faster. 
Yes. Faster for sure. They're, the players are leaner. They're not nearly as muscular as when I came because back then it, it's changed so much from when I, my 10 years of pro, it changed drastically and it's still changing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I think it's evolving fitness and diet and all of this stuff is it's so key, especially now because I guess back in the day, they used to come into camp and use that to get in shape. Whereas now it's, you, you have to come in in shape or else you're to see ya. That's it. No, yeah. you're done. Yeah, no. And, uh, we, and yeah, it was like my era was kind of the end of like that mix of, of guys of there were guys that were kind of like giving her, but then there were guys that like really gave her and like, you could tell the difference. And then for me, it's weird doing this because the guys that still play my age yeah. are the guys that were taking care of themselves. The guys that were doing extra, the guys that were foam roll and cold tubbing. Like I got to the AHL. I didn't know what a foam roller was. Dude, it's, it's wild. So I mean, in juniors, I was introduced to that, right? Or even, yeah, my first year juniors foam rolling. But like now, even in the summer, I, I go do like cryotherapy every day. I get like massages. I do all this stuff to try and help and prolong my body. So I can, is that like, not expensive though? It is, but I look at it as an investment in myself. You know, if you, you got, you have to put money into whatever you're trying to get money out of. So my body is what I need to invest in if I'm going to be well, and that yeah and that was one thing i i didn't get like there were guys paying whatever for trainers i'm like i can do this myself i'll be fine <laughs> right yeah and i think like after a while i'm sure you know that years down the line i'll know what my body needs and then even now i'm starting to understand like hey i need rest i need i can push myself a little bit more um but honestly i put an emphasis on recovery and and making sure i'm feeling good physically like ice pass, whatever I need. Like I just do it because I, I feel like if someone else is doing it, if I'm not and they're going to get an edge and I just don't want well, to have that gap. Yeah. Too far, no, right? And that's the way hockey's gone, man, is like yeah. back with, it wasn't, I, well, I guess I was in Europe, right. It was always like that in North America. It was always like that trying to make the NHL. And then I mm -hmm. went to Europe and like, there's a lot of guys that was like, well, this is like fun now, right? Like this is fun now. As fun as they can and they can make some money doing it, right? And they're so, good at it and they weren't yeah. going to make it, but wow. yeah. Um, the, making it, it burped again. <laughs> um, but like making it and how hard it is, like the diet and the way I saw the game change and like the, the cold tubs, the foam rolling. And like you said, that stuff, I didn't even know what that was. Like oh, yeah. that is like, that's where the game's gone to. And that's what you need to be ready to go yeah. every night. And I remember games where I would feel so shitty and you put the body on autopilot and you just kind of go out and go through the motions. Like nowadays guys are feeling good more nights than yeah. they used to. Right. I mean, good is a relative term. I think the, everyone has their nights, as you say, but I think, all the recovery stuff and the information is really what it all, what it can boils down to from when you play. And it gets else. you feeling better more nights than it used to. <laughs> Without a doubt, you know, the cold tubs, the nutrition, the recovery stuff, the protein, all that stuff. At the end of the day, like an 82 game season or 75, whatever, uh, the more you do that, the, like down the road, when those important games come up, the better you're going to be. Uh, and I think it's great that you've had the, your old man as a mentor to guide you through this stuff and teach you because yeah. when I had him on, he seemed like a great teammate to guys, a guy that do anything for the team. Yeah. And, um, you seem very similar and uh, you seem cut from the same cloth or the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I think they say. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think like every, I mean, I've learned pretty much everything from him as far as hockey and just how I carry myself too, right? Like that's the like big goes a long way in pro too. guys, guys make a living, even if they're not the greatest players as they get older, because they're really good in the locker room and they're, they're a good mentor to, to kids that are potentially have the chance to play in the NHL. Well, and the, uh, the other, well, you're going to be in the NHL, so you don't need to mentor the guys not in the NHL. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah. Uh, the thing is, is like, yeah, like every, team needs but the thing is is if you're not that if you're not a good teammate you just don't last long you're not in the game that long because people see through it and like people talk and like 
the hockey world, especially when people have podcasts and like people are talking, like everybody knows who's a good dude and who's not nowadays. And, uh, no, you seem like a good dude that I can't wait till you play your first game this year, man. I'm going to be so excited for you. Yeah, and, uh, I'm really a terrible person. Huh? It's a facade. I'm a terrible person. No, I don't think so. Um, no, I met your old man, played hockey for him, and I know where you came from. And yeah. uh, no, you're just fine. And uh, I'd have you on my team anytime. And uh, yeah, no, it's been really nice getting to know you for the past however long. Um, I I can't wait to see how you do this year, man. Yeah, thanks, man. This is it's been fun. I'm glad we did this. It's a uh, surprise. I didn't really know what I listened to my dad. Right, but it's uh, you know what to expect. So it's cool. No, I it's didn't. Cool. I, I honestly, I don't know what to expect either. Each time, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know my days are better when I'm doing this. Like today, I'm like, yeah. I've never had a 24 year old on. I don't know if I can talk to the guys anymore. Like, am I too old? Yeah, can you relate anymore? What's yeah, going on? yeah. I don't know if I still got it. You know, like mm -hmm. I was watching my kids' soccer game right before, and I was like, geez kind of nervous <laughs> <laughs> i'm real intimidating yeah, yeah. no yeah. but uh i know I, I i i i just love the stories i love hearing it and awesome. like i can't wait for you to come on again with like you still got a lot of time left man and that's I'm what's hoping, fun about this now you're still doing this or you know two years and a year you know let me know it's i no, love dude i'm still gonna be doing it and uh, yeah. i'm pretty sure you got buddies and you're gonna meet a lot more buddies because yeah. that's what happened to me when i was 24 i had no idea all the people i was gonna meet all the places i was gonna go and you still got a lot in front of you dude Thanks. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I'm excited. Well, you're the you're the first player on the pod that Prime has not come yet. So mm -hmm. everybody yeah, well, else, okay, everybody yeah. else was way on the other side of the hill, like not even close. Like my dad, like completely just done. Well, he sounded like he still thought he had it because he was skating with you guys. Yeah, I mean, top six, so you can't really compare <laughs> Jimmy and Old Phil and. You know, Paulie Azim, he's got, he can't really keep up with them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's like, but he sounded like he was still giving her. That's for sure. He is. I trust, trust me. He still, he still loves to play twice a week. He loves it. Well, he uh, was in way better shape than me when we did it. Like, <laughs> he keeps himself in shape, eh? Oh, yeah. He's prided himself on that for even when he played. I think that was one of his things. He I think that's do. living in Georgia, though. You guys have to have your tops off a lot more than I do. Yeah, well, you got to get in the sun, right? You got to have a good beach body, as they say. Well, right. Yeah, we have the beach here, but it's only for a couple months. So, <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, this has been, unless you got something else, do you got anything? That's, I mean, I think we've covered all the bases as far as whatever it's supposed to talk Yeah, about. now we're going to talk about uh, the next few years next time you come on because this shit ain't stopping, man. It's a no, full I go. Love it. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, and this has been another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Chase and Wally.